right, guys. I got a new build for you. Let's see if it's somewhere. Sorry for my record button. Uh, I have to put it somewhere kind of out of the way. All right, new build for you. Pretty similar to what everyone else runs. Um, I will say, <clears throat> I don't think my greens are the best because I hardly use I hardly use the uh, <clears throat> hardly use the primary. Having said that, the cool vendetta probably also not the best because I hardly use the primary, but. In the times that I can use my primary attack, it's it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. That's when I get the kills. Um, but all right, let's run through this. For PvP, <clears throat> a lot of people run this everywhere. I don't necessarily. Uh, there's there's better options for DPS now. But the, uh, for PvP, this is a stalwart. Siphon Blood is no longer channeled, moves with you. It's a continual damage. You know, pretty, pretty standard. My next thing is uh, for movement bats. A lot of people, for Blood Swarm, a lot of people use this. Nothing really... Uh, game changing here. Uh, I've got Cool Vendetta on. It is, you know, it is. Actually, I think I will change that. Because I do think. What's the other option? This other option is better. I think you definitely want Reverend Hunter. Siphon Blood, slowing movement speed, increasing your movement speed is just nice. Uh, broken Corsac. I hope that's how you say it. That's nice for PvP. Increases your Siphon Blood damage, which, guess what? Increases your healing. Also, also very clutch. Very good. Back over here, save it so I don't mess it up again. All right, uh, next thing got broken Corsac, Reverend Hunter. I get the movement speed and I get the extra damage. If I hit the enemy three times, it causes them to hemorrhage, dealing additional damage. And I get a bonus for siphon blood damage. Um, the curse properties, I think you can kind of go with whatever you want here. I think nettled is a very good um, option right here. Ghosted, it kind of adds to your your buff, your your buffness heaviness uh, staying ability so I'm and I'm not obviously I've only got three pieces I'm not too terribly worried about it <clears throat> I'm kind of waiting for the perfect things to come along before because like this I don't have my I do have ghosted on like this one I don't want to. I don't want to reduce my continual damage. It would probably outweigh the whole um, the thing. It would probably outweigh the benefit. Would outweigh the uh, the curse. You know, I probably do more than that two percent, two and a half percent damage I lose, but. I'm I'm just kind of at a point where I get upgrades often enough that it's 
it's not worth you know re-rolling stuff every couple days yeah when I get it kind of locked out a little better I'll probably roll it better but uh, another thing I want to point out all my all my stuff I'm not too terribly worried about combat rating and I'm also not too terribly worried about the uh, I, I basically want the highest strength and the highest fortitude on all of my gear. I'll go over that in a minute as for why. <clears throat> Combat rating is nice, but also you're talking about a uh, what plus or plus or minus ten percent damage. It can it it'll add up, but you don't want to add combat rating at the cost of strength or fortitude strength is your base damage stat fortitude is both your armor and your armor penetration so damage and sustainability now for the chest I'm running Stroud of Night gives you shadowy apparitions you get shields shield effect is increased blah 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 let me go over here to the to the skill deal so you can see what this does shroud of night now conjure, conjures shadowy apparitions every two seconds for 12 seconds 12 full seconds every two seconds so I'm getting six shields, okay? Each of these six shields absorbed just about 40,000 damage for two seconds. Now, let me show you this. So now I got the shield up. I pop, I get another shield. Every time I see that pop, I get a new shield more 40,000 more 40,000 and look at look it's a hundred percent uptime with you know of course I've got beneficial effect stacked but that lasts you know longer than 12 seconds because of my beneficial effect duration each each proc it's 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 very nice it's very nice it just adds to your life um, it adds to your sustainability you couple that with the fact that you're untargetable when you got your skewer you don't have to do the dash at the end which is nice you can throw your siphon Wow Wait a minute, hold up. I thought you could throw a siphon while, yeah. Huh. Hold on, hold on, we'll try that one more time because the bottom of this. All right, blood skewer. No way, I swear it wasn't doing that the other day, but okay. <clears throat> you want to throw a siphon before your blood skewer. And then you can run around with it. And then, guess what? You got bats. That's untargetable. Also. And, you know, your shield just protects you in that, like, two seconds that you're not in, uh, whatever, sanguinate. Or untargetable bats like the two seconds that you don't have one of those abilities up or if one of them gets interrupted now you have a shield that in effect you know practically let's see f uh, let's go back to the skill 40 rounded up to 40,000 damage 
that it blocks and you get six of them that's 240,000 damage mitigation and guess what your shield gets the same you know the the, sh the shield takes the same damage that you know you would take all right like uh based on your armor rating i'm kind of getting ahead of myself let me get back to this we'll, we'll get back to the armor in a minute um so the shielding shielding shroud of night now for that i can see a, an argument for poison bats especially since i'm running seeping bandlet that's huge damage i could i could definitely see running a four piece uh banquet of eyes uh maybe even a six piece and running poison bats but for this specific build i'm running healing bats you'll see why it's gonna be great uh for these for your offhand, I'm running the Shadow's Edge uh, Ricochet, even though you're not going to be, you're just not going to be using your primary attack a lot. <clears throat> there are cases where you can, and those cases are great. But, you're, you're you know, and for me, that does seem like the main time I get kills is when Shadow's Edge. You know, when I can use Shadow's Edge. Okay. So the greens, we went over. I like having at least a two-piece Vithu. It's, it's just helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Now, look at the stats. I am... You know, decently high Paragon. So that does factor into this. Uh, increases base average use by 333%. But, it's not, you know, like the end-all be-all that makes this build work. It definitely helps. If you're running shield, like, why, like why wouldn't yeah, especially with the way the meta has kind of shifted toward uh, the uh, health is not decreased as much in in uh, by the strike bonus, and now damage reduction, you know, in in areas with strife, damage is reduced like 30 you know uh, another 30 percent or damage mitigation increase 30 percent whatever the fact may be whatever it is I gotta look at I gotta look into that whatever it is it's made it's made you a lot tankier so this is where the health is kind of uh, helping more this is where the fortitude is getting back to where it really is paying off. Um, I go to my more attributes. I'm finally getting my, by running fortitude on everything, I'm finally getting my armor back over uh, 3,000, which is nice. Not so much. Sator is nice because you block and you get, a huge huge uh, damage reduction with blood knight you're not blocking so much you you know like you don't get the bonus chance to block unless you're running uh, certain paragon but it also
also reduces the crit damage you take. If your armor is low, if your armor is lower than the enemy's armor penetration, you're just gonna die faster. That's just how it is. Armor reduces the uh, the crit damage that you take. Block. Uh, someone said that crit hits can't be blocked. Honestly, I haven't looked into it that far, but armor, just flat armor, reduces damage in general. It reduces, and I know because you can read the tooltips here, uh, because I have more armor than, you know, the base level, uh, you know, what is, whatever is expected, it increases my damage reduction from blocking, blah, blah, blah. Oh, jeez, where does it say? Okay, yeah, here, armor penetration. My armor penetration is a little bit higher than expected for my level, blah, blah, blah. Increasing my crit hit damage by 41% from a baseline of double. So, if I hit a crit hit, I'm hitting 91% increase. Uh, I'm sorry, two... Wow, terribly, terribly wrong there. I have a 50... I don't know why I'm saying double. I don't know why I'm saying 50. Anyway... Baseline of double damage, so 241% damage if you hit a crit. It's a 141% increase. Boom, boom. Anyway. But, okay, if I were to hit someone with 3,340 armor versus... My armor penetration. Nobody knows exactly how that formula gets worked out, but I, the long and short of it, basically, I would not get that bonus 41%. If you have low armor, you're pr and you get hit by someone with higher armor penetration, you're basically giving them higher crit damage yeah these these two stats play off each other for each individual you know enemy especially if you pvp everyone you fight they play off each other that's why i like i really don't stack potency and my resistance really comes from gems because guess what that gives you uh damage all right, so there's all that. I'll show you the Paragon real quick. Okay. For this, I kind of gone differently than I normally would. I did not grab, and I'm working on it now. But in my mind, number one priority on any build you want to grab all the damage nodes all the way across all the damage nodes why because that's going to be the most noticeable for this build and I was kind of playing around with it I wanted to see how it would do but I grabbed all the health nodes Thirdly, and I don't normally, I definitely don't grab health as my second priority on any builds. I always go damage and then armor penetration. Right now, and just because of my level, I'm, lo I'm losing 11 times, what do they each give you? Four. I'm losing 44 armor penetration, and there's a armor somewhere that I don't have maxed. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I'm also losing uh, like a, another 80 armor penetration there. I would be doing a lot more damage. Um, you, oh yeah, and then this, I, I'm missing out on another 4,280 armor. So, I'm definitely not I'm definitely making sacrifices to focus on the health. But my health is uh, to what is it, 25,000 higher than it would be if I didn't take the Paragon. Uh, the, the health in the Paragon. Which factors into the shield and the durability of this build. I'm not. I'm not saying this. Uh, I definitely wouldn't normally go this way. I really think that damage and armor penetration are the top stats to focus on, and then armor probably third. But if you're running shield, high shield builds, and especially with the meta right now it's it's worth playing around with health a little bit it's worth sacrificing a little bit in other areas um so oh and the paragon that i run i like to run survivor i've tried different stuff out if you're high res, higher res, and you're only playing lower res players, then uh, what to call it down here? Executioner is very fun. It increases your damage, increases your move speed. Uh, you you what is this? You disable them and slow them by thirty five percent. If you take a player below 30% life, which is, guess what, very nice for this build. When you defeat, defeat an enemy, you re reduce cooldowns, you increase your damage 250%. You know, I kind of, I want to, I want to, I like, I really like that, but you really got to be, great if you're playing against people that you know you're a shoe in it's just gonna make the kills happen faster going against you know uh the way i play a lot of blood knight is going against the crowd which it would also help with that but i'm kind of doubling down on durability is my strategy gladiator i say it it's it's really clutch to have the cheat death but my problem with the cheat death is you're looking at three and a half minutes you know you're talking about you're gonna get like two maybe three less deaths in a battleground for something like vault, okay, you're gonna you you know where you die once and you're done. It's nice to have that second life, but I'm finding in any case where I'm dying, it's because I've got like four to six other players like all teeing off on me, and I'm crowd controlled, and I just can't get away can't do anything and I get murdered so to have a cheat death most 90% of the time I'm coming out of that and I'm just gonna get murked by the same group all over again so I messed up all right so what I like to run is survivor for every 10% of missing life I take 1.2% less damage. And that stacks up uh, nicely. <clears throat> it 
something like you won't get a full 12 percent damage reduction but you get like you know easy easy uh 10 percent uh escape artist whenever you drop below 30 percent life you gain 33 percent increased movement speed and can move unhindered through monsters blah 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 this is kind of more for rift but it's nice in pvp Whenever you drop below 30% life, you gain 35% increased block chance for 6 seconds. It is nice. Because, like that block chance, it, the block chance is nice. It gives you, you know, especially if you got high armor, that damage mitigation is insane. Like running Crusader... You know, I would get something like 80% block chance from between, uh, what was it, my base block chance, the block chance from punish, and the block chance from this. Something like 80% block chance. Um, obviously, uh, what is it, Blood Knight doesn't have that increased block chance from like punish. But my base block chance is still, yeah, I'm only at like 14%. But the point is 14, 35, that's still 50% block chance. Uh, I mitigate a lot of damage. Add that to, I'm mitigating damage on top of a to almost, you know, 240,000 full health full shield, and I'm mitigating, you know, I'm blocking 50% of the time for something like 68% damage mitigation whenever I block. Whew, that makes me pretty tanky. That's even on top of the 326 K damage or, or uh, life that I'm rocking. So, will this scale down to lower tiers? I mean, anyone. I don't get a bonus to armor. You know, uh, resonance doesn't boost armor or armor penetration. It only increases uh, attack and health, all right? So you're not going to get as much health. You're not going to be as tanky, all right? But uh, running this build as low res. But what makes it work is I'm untargetable that long, untargetable that long, and I've just got to cover the one second before my sanguinate comes back. And I've got this immense shield the whole time. Um, I think most people usually run like a... Some type of a uh, crowd control in here. I kind of... I kind of find... My, I guess, niche, if you will, is staying un untargetable, staying undamageable, and then having that shield also. Like, I, you know, I just pop that on, swoop into enemy players, that comes down, swoop in, swooping around, and, uh, you know, have try to have siphon blood up when I do it that's up when I do it I'm not only healing myself I'm also doing damage and a lot of people just run the heck away because they can't sustain versus that I've yeah the main thing the longer you stay untargetable the less damage you're gonna take plus the shield mitigation plus the healing you know, you you end up being really really tough. I I fought a eight thousand res player the other day, 
and they were like a more traditional Blood Knight build, and it was like them pushing Idol solo on the one side, and me just hammering them. You know, I kill I killed them a few times, and I I hardly lost any lives at all. Here's here's a few screenshots. Uh, Clairvoyance was about my res. Obviously, you know, they were playing Monk. They got a few more kills. Monk also runs highly untargetable stuff. Um, yeah, so. But my team got the victory because they couldn't push idols. I was, like, I was kept chasing them off. This one got clairvoyance on the same team. America Idol was huge, like 800 res. I killed him. His two deaths, that was me. Uh, clairvoyance did a lot of work. We won this one also on time, on defense. This one, we were on attack. And we just, yeah hammered it in really well um but yeah that's this this is what i'm running but yeah this this is really what i'm running right now and uh yeah after shoot one twelve <sighs> yeah vault's pretty well closed right now but uh i wanted to i want to get some highlights in here too but, uh, I think I'll just post this video as is, and, uh, I'll do some highlights later referring to this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hope this helps some people. Uh, have fun.